Hi, I'm Maggie Takuda Hall. I'm the author of The Mermaid, The Witch, and the Sea, which came out this May with Candlewick Press. It's a story that has all the things that the title promises, a mermaid who's been stolen from the sea, a witch with some ulterior motives, and the sea, who's a point of view character. And it also has Flora or Florian, who's a bi-gender pirate, and Evelyn, who's an imperial girl who's being shipped off into an arranged marriage she has a zero interest in. It's a magic adventure story with a big queer romance at its heart, and I hope that you enjoy it. Um, I was asked to do a video to tell you a little bit about the book, and the easiest thing for me to talk about is other people's books, so I'm going to tell you about the books that helped me write this book. Um, firstly, when I was a kid I actually wasn't a super good reader, um, and I didn't really read anything except for Calvin and Hobbes and R.L. Stein books until I was about 13 years old. Uh, when we moved from LA to Piedmont, which is a little town inside of Oakland, and I didn't have any friends. So I did what lots of kids do when they have no friends at a new school, and I hid in the library at lunch. And while I was there, I found this book, Dealing with Dragons by Patricia Reed. And it turned me into a fantasy reader. Uh, and I was attracted to it because the cover was different than this cover, but it did have Cimmerine on the cover and she had this like long curly black hair, which for obvious reasons was very appealing to me. Um, and I loved it. I loved the way that it played with gender. I loved its sense of humor. I loved the magic. I loved all the dragons, obviously. Um, and so I really credit this book for being the book that made me into a huge reader of fantasy and then eventually writer of it as well. Uh, and then a thousand years later, after I graduated from college, I got a job in an independent bookstore as a children's bookseller. And I didn't really know yet what the young adult genre was, but one of the books that really introduced me to it was The Astonishing Life of Octavian Nothing by M.T. Anderson. Um, I credit him and this book with being the reason I wanted to write for teens. I read this and then I re immediately read everything else he had ever written because he's brilliant and his books are perfect and I would like to eat his brain if that kind of thing were legal. Uh, this book also won the National Book Award and you can tell what an OG fan I am of it because I have a copy without the sticker on it because I bought it in hardback after reading the arc of it, so kind of a big deal. Anyway, this book is amazing, he is amazing, um, and the reason it blew open Young Adult for me was because I had a totally wrong impression that it was all going to be books that uh, were like Judy Bloom, which when I was a teenager were not appealing to me. Um, I liked things with murder and kissing and things like that and uh, big questions and M.T. Anderson's books provided most of those things. There's very little kissing in his books, that's my only critique. Otherwise he's perfect. But that's okay, because I found kissing in the next book, which was Greasling by Kristen Kishor. Thanks to Patricia Reed, I already loved uh, reading fantasy Kristen Kishore really made me want to write it. Um, Gracing was one of the first fantasy books I read that was so particularly from a woman's perspective, and I was so relieved and excited by that. Uh, it has a huge romance at its center, but it also has a main character who I related to in ways that I hadn't related to other fantasy leads. And the other thing that I really took away from it was you can make up your own whole world with all its own rules. It doesn't always have to be that kind of Tolkien-esque fantasy world. Uh, and so I loved this entire series by Kristen Kishore. If you haven't read it, I absolutely recommend it. There's going to be a fourth book in it finally after like a decade, and I could not be more excited. Um, and it really made me want to write my own fantasy novel. Um, one of the other books that really heavily inspired The Mermaid, The Witch, and The Sea is this one, which is Eon by Alison Goodman. When I first started book selling, it was right after I graduated from college, and the push towards diverse books hadn't really happened yet. Uh, it was not in a big way anyway. It was obviously a thing that people have been asking for for decades, but there was no we need diverse books uh, organization or kind of like a larger awareness within the industry about it. And so Eon was one of the first just incredibly queer fantasy young adult novels that I read. And I realized that when I wrote my own young adult fantasy novel, I wanted it to be 
incredibly queer as well. It was refreshing, it was exciting, I felt myself more reflected within it because there were finally people who had complicated relationships with gender and same-sex relationships, and so, uh, plus dragons, which have, as we've established, big fan. Big fan of dragons. To be fair, there is, or to be clear, there is only one dragon in The Mermaid, The Witch, and the Sea that is mentioned, and it is a skeleton, uh, but anyway, that's neither here nor there. Um, this book is, I think, out of print, but I really credit it as being the book that helps me realize that when you create your own world, that means you get to populate it with the people that you wish you saw in all the other stories. And for me, that was like a very queer, very brown, very non-white perspective. Um, and I was really excited about that. Uh, the other book that I would say had the biggest influence on The Mermaid, The Witch, and the Sea is not really a fantasy novel, it's a science fiction novel, and it's The Knife of Never Letting Go by Patrick Ness. Um, in it, violence is never casual. Every act of violence that is committed in this book reverberates throughout the entire trilogy and is of utmost importance to every character who's affected by it. And I thought that that was such a beautiful and actually very hopeful way to think about violence. Um, often in young adult, one of the markers of the genre is violence, like Hunger Games being one of the most famous and let's be real, most enjoyable books that have come out uh, within it. And I do think that while violence can be really fun and really interesting and provide a lot of kind of cool adventure opportunities, what I liked about The Knife of Never Letting Go was that it didn't allow you as the reader to ever escape the personal horror of it. And so when I wrote The Mermaid, The Witch, and the Sea, it was really important to me that the violence that's committed in that book reverberate in the same way. And so one of the things that I often tell people when they're asking me what ages should read my book, uh, I say like 12 and 13 and up, depending on their sensitivity, because there is violence in it and I wrote the violence to be intentionally to be horrible. Um, and that came from The Knife of Never Letting Go, which is also a great trilogy. And then while I was writing the book, uh, I tried really hard not to read other fantasy novels because I didn't want to like accidentally steal stuff. So I read a lot of nonfiction and a lot of books were super helpful, but um, like 1492 and, uh, and this one, which is Guns, Germs, and Steel by Jared Diamond. So one of the biggest themes in my book is sort of the Venn diagram of uh, the mythology of a person or a nation and the reality of it and kind of the narrow and sometimes non-existent places where those two circles meet. Um, and Guns, Germs, and Steel does such a beautiful job of explaining sort of the myth of white exceptionalism, like of Europeans going and conquering the world with the reality, which was that they had a lot of tools at their disposal that just weren't available on other continents. Um, and that was so helpful for me as I started thinking about how to write the imperial class within the Mermaid, the Witch, and the Sea, who are coded as sort of like a Japanese, American, British empire who have brutally colonized the entire known world that they are a part of. Um, and it also helped that uh, I read this book while traveling through South America with my husband, we drove uh, basically down the west coast of the entire continent. Um, and so we were privy to just a lot of evidence of the long tail of the violence and the destitution that colonialism wreaks. And obviously we're in another moment in our own country where we're really having to uh, come to grips with the fact that America has always been uh, an economy that has not functioned without slavery, without free labor, that the long tail of colonialism and the violence that it's begot all over the world is also true in our own nation, and that the story of being the land of the free is maybe not true for most of our, or for many of our citizens. And so Guns, Germs, and Steel really helped me think about that. Um, as I wrote, this book, which as mentioned, uh, just came out in May. Um, if you like stories with murder, uh, magic, obviously mermaids, some kissing, and some violence, um, I hope you pick up mine. It's 
uh, available for sale wherever books are sold. And oh my gosh, I almost forgot the code word. Bing, 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 bing. The code word is the Dove, which is the name of the pirate ship that Florian or Flora serves on that is seeking to kidnap the Lady Evelyn. Anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed my video, but more than anything, I hope you read my book or any of these great books here that I feel infinitely more comfortable talking about. Thanks for watching.